Today, we're going to take a look at how to do the bubble sort. So first of all, um, what is a bubble sort? A bubble sort is a simple sorting algorithm. And the bubble sort works by repeatedly compare and swap each pair of adjacent items if they are in the wrong order. So if they are in the correct order, then nothing is done. If they are in the wrong order, the two items get swapped, right? And in this case, we're going to push the higher number. We're going to store an array of integers and we're going to push the higher number to the back of the array. And the lower number is going to come to the front of the array. Okay, so let's get started. So here I have created a new Java class in my special topics algorithm package. The Java class is called bubble sort. And here I have my main here. So let's get started by asking the user to enter how many cells in the array how, how many elements in the array that they want to compare so let me define an integer number let's call it e for the number of elements in the array and i'm gonna set it equal to i'm gonna use my method that we created in our last lesson our last lesson was to scan an integer. We created a method down here, and the method is called scan. So if you want to take a look at that code, just uh, refer back to our last lesson, our previous lesson. So here I'm gonna call that method. So I'm gonna call scan integer method so that's the the program name is right here right the, the class name scan integer method and i'm gonna put a dot here then i'll pick from the list i'm gonna use the scan method all right and this method is gonna take a string as an input if you remember from our last lesson so we're gonna say please enter number of arrays how about please enter a number of array elements to sort please enter number of array elements that you want to sort number of element to sort okay so that that's what we're gonna prompt the user and that number that they enter is gonna be stored in our variable e here we're just gonna assume that they enter a valid integer number um, and next thing we want to do is we want to declare an array of integers to store like all the numbers so i have here integer array let's name it uh, um a equals to new integer array and the length of the array is gonna be e which is what the user enter above And I just want to initialize the array. So I'm going to do arrays.fill. And let me see here. I'm going to pick the integer since I have inter an integer array. Um, my first argument is going to be my array name. It's going to be A. And I want to initialize it to zero so i want to start out with an array filled with all zeros 
and then I'm gonna ask the user to enter each element after that so now let's uh, send out a message um, say sys out please enter a positive integer value for each of the array elements for each of the array elements dot 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 okay so the the, if the uh, user enter four for the um, for the length of the array, for the number of elements in the array, then here they're gonna have to enter four different values for for each of the elements in the array. So now I want to have a for loop to read in all those values. So I'm declaring my integer equal zero through i less than the length of the array. The length of, of the array is e. That's what the user enter up here. And we're gonna do i plus plus. All right. Now, uh, same as our previous example, um, I just want to make sure the values they enter are valid uh, integers, like uh, greater one or greater. I don't want to uh, have a zero. So I'm going to do a while loop. While a, that's my array element i of a is less than one because if they enter an invalid integer uh, my my scan method here is going to return a zero so i'm checking if it's less than one means that it's an invalid integer so while it's less than one i want to keep asking the user to re-enter the uh, integer and on the first pass here ai will be less than one because we have initialized all the elements to zero so on the first pass it will be less than one and it will ask the user to enter an integer so i use the, the same integer scan integer method which we are using up there above dot scan all right and what should we put here um we, we just want to send out the message how about um just put the the uh, array element so we're gonna do um a and I'm gonna add the element number, which is the i. Then I'm gonna close the bracket there. Okay. So I'm sending them a message. Oh, may maybe put an equal sign in there and put a space in there to make it look nice. Mhm. Mm so I'm sending them. A message I'm saying this is array element 0 and they gonna enter a um, value for it then I'm gonna do array element 1 we're gonna keep on doing it because we got the uh, the for loop here and if the value they entered is, is not valid then I'm just gonna resend the same message again so they have to re-enter until we get a valid value okay so um, next let's um, let's print the array just to make sure that we got everything correct so far um, so to print the array i'm gonna need 
a uh, for loop. So I'm going to do for um, for for i for integer i because we have to define it equals zero through um, i less than the length of the array which is e i plus plus okay and let me put a space in there to make it look nice and I'm just gonna print out the, the array so I'm gonna do sys out and I'm gonna print the array um, so it's just gonna be element i of the array the array name is a and I'm printing the element i alright um, let's see how that looks like gonna run it okay so it's asking me please enter number of array elements to sort let's say I do four now it's asking me for the value of each element please enter a positive integer value for each element in the array so let's say um, if I enter an invalid value like r which is not a real integer and I hit enter it's asking me again because of the while loop that we have here right same as our previous lesson where we um, we did the Euclidean um, algo algorithm all right so I'm gonna have to keep uh, it keep asking me the same question until it gets like a valid integer like a seven then it's gonna ask me to enter the next element of the array so say seven three then I got eight and six let's say right hit enter and then it print out the array here so I, I can see that I have seven three eight six all right so that's my array. Um, to make it look more like an array, um, why don't I put this? Um, you know what? Uh, wh why don't we put it sideways so it looks nicer, right? So um, I'm gonna do system out, and instead of print line, I'm just gonna do print. That would make it go sideways. Let's try it again. Okay, now I got four, now five, three, seven, nine. Okay, so four elements, five, three, seven, nine, and they are all, all together. So let me separate them by entering, putting in a format. So I'm gonna do. Um, how many numbers, how many spaces do we want for each? Um, I think five should be enough. So let's do five spaces. Let's see how this look. I'm gonna run it. Okay, four. Okay, four, two, seven, nine. Whoa, that doesn't look good. Let's see what's going on. The format, there's something wrong with the format. So let's take a look. I put in percentage. Oh, here my mistake. Percentage 5D. Okay, let's try it again. So I'm going to do 4, 3, 7, 2, 9 okay now it looks better so this is my array this is element zero this is element one two three all right now since in this um in this program we're going to be using this the same we, we want to print the array over and over again so instead of 
putting it here, I'm gonna have a method. I'm gonna create a method for it so I don't have to keep coding it over and over again, right? So here, instead of using that, I'm gonna do public static void. Since my method is not returning anything, so I'm gonna return void and the name of the method is going to be print array and my method is going to take in an integer array a so i'm passing in the array and instead of doing this one here i'm just gonna copy it and I'm gonna put it inside my method here all right one other thing I want to do is I just want to add some more description maybe so let's say so we know it's an array so i'm gonna say i'm gonna print the line and i'm gonna say um i want to print it on the same line whoops do any parentheses there and let's just say array equals to and then we're gonna have the, the bunch of numbers. So, so this way it looks clearer. And after I print here, I want to um, let me move this down here. So first I'm gonna print array equals, then I'm gonna print all the numbers going across in my for loop here. And then I want to, so I don't even need the brackets here. And then I want to skip a line. Okay, so that's going to skip a line. And there's a problem here because it doesn't know what E is. Because E is defined outside of this method. So what I want to do is instead of E, um, I'm just going to get the array length. I'm going to do array dot length. All right, so that's going to return my, it's going to print my array. And instead of doing this here, now I can just call that method. So the method is print array. And I need to pass in the array name. So it's A. All right, let's try this. Number of elements in the array. It's going to be four. First element, three, two, eight, four. Okay, so the array is 3, 2, 8, 4. This is the first element, element 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm, I, I mean index 0, index 1, 2, 3, right? And the length of the array is 4. Okay, so we have our array. Now, next, here comes uh, today's lesson. We're going to do a bubble sort. So to do the bubble sort, um, you need to um, let you need to have you need to go through the array mul multiple times, and each time you're gonna compare and swap the the um, adjacent items so that the larger number goes to the back of the array and the smaller number goes to the front of the array 
So you uh, would have to do this multiple times. Each time, you're going to end up with the largest number at the end of the array. So then the second pass through, when you go through the second time, you don't have to go all the way to the end of the array, but you you can stop like one element before that, right? So um, what we want to do is we want to have two different loops. Um, we're going to have... First, I'm going to define like a temporary integer. That's what I'm going to use um, to store, to swap the array. In case I need to swap the array, I need one extra field. So that's my variable for swapping. And here we're going to do the bubble sort. My first for loop, I'm going to do for integer i equals 0 through i less than the length of the array minus 1. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you the reason for that. So instead of going all the way till the end of the array, we're going to go to the element before the end of the array. Because the algorithm, we're going to check the that current element and the next element. So the next element will be the, the last element in the array. So we only need to go to the element before the end of the array. So there we go. That's one for loop. And we're going to have another for loop inside of that for loop. So I'm going to do for integer j equals to 0 to j less than. It's going to be e minus i plus 1. j equals e minus i plus 1 and j plus plus. Now here, here's the reason for that is when you first go through, when i is 0, then you also go to the element before the last element because you're going to check that element plus the next element. The next element would be the, the um, final element. So you're only going up to here in this case, and then you check 8 and 4, then you swap them if they need to be swapped, right? Um, but that's the first pass. After the first pass, your 8 is going to be here, so you know the 8 is already sorted. So on the second pass, you only have to go up to here, and then you check this element and the last element. So, so each time, you're going to go one less, and that's the reason why um, you're doing E minus I plus 1, because when you start out, I is 0. But then as you go through, you loop through, i is going to become one more each time. And that's why you want to subtract i because you want to go one less each time as you go through. All right. Um, we're going to see how it works once we get the whole program together and we'll print out each step. It's going to be more clearer. So now this is my second loop and for each uh, iteration of j I want to check to see if the values need to be swapped or not. So I'm going to do if and this is where I'm going to check if a j is greater than which is my current element is greater than the next element, which is a j plus 1. Then I'm going to swap them.
So to swap them, this is where I'm going to use my temporary variable here. I'm going to say, I'm going to set the temporary variable equal to my current variable, which is a j. And now I'm going to set my current variable to the next variable, to the value of the next variable, which is a j plus 1. And then my next variable is going to be replaced by the value of the current variable, which is the t variable. All right, so uh, basically we're just swapping aj and aj plus 1 whenever the current element, the value of the current element is greater than the value of the next element. So we're pushing the higher number towards the end of the array. If they, if, uh, if the value of the current is less than the next um, element, then nothing is done. This whole if statement is not done and nothing is done. Then we're just gonna go up to the next j. We're just gonna do j plus one and check the next two elements. So we're gonna keep on doing this till we're done. So um, for each iteration of j, I'm gonna print out the array. So this is where the beauty of having uh, uh, method because I don't have to rewrite all this code over here all I need to do is I'm gonna do print array and my array is a and that's it all right um, to make things clearer so that one th this print array is going to be printed for each iteration of j. Um, I just want to print something here so I know that I'm starting a new iteration of i. So let's say, um, just say i loop, let's say. So this is, how about n of i loop? or just i loop okay so i'm gonna print i loop so we can separate it um and maybe up here this is where my uh, original array is that's where the user just entered so let me just print something here too so that it separate the uh, so we know which one is the original and which one is the iteration of j okay i think uh that's it uh, let's give it a try and we're gonna run it and see what's going on okay please enter number of elements to sort so we're gonna do four again and now we're gonna do let's say nine eight seven six so I'm actually entering the, the worst case scenario here where all the numbers needed to be swapped like they're all out of order they're in reverse order so we're gonna have to flip them the other way so those are the elements nine so this is my original array here first element is nine second elements eight seven six so i got four elements in this this array and when i go through my j loop here so this is the first I loop, right? From here up is the first I loop. Since, since my array has a length of four, 
my I loop is gonna go to from zero to four minus one is zero to three, but but it's less than that, so it's going from zero to two because I'm checking for I less than three. So it's gonna go um, I equals zero. Well, that's J, so this, this is I equal zero. This is I equal one. And then this is I equal two, right? So those are the the um, the I loop. Now the J loop is also gonna go. It's also gonna start with going from zero to two. So this is my J loop. This is J equal zero, J equal one, J equal two. So let's see what it does. My original array is here. At j equals zero, this one doesn't look good because I'm expecting it to swap the eight and the nine, and it didn't do that. So let's take a look at why it didn't do that. So maybe there's a problem with the swap here so I store temporary variable with J J in this case should be 9 and then AJ equals to AJ plus 1 and here it is because I don't want see I move the the number 8 to this I don't want to move it back to the other one it's gonna make it both the same so here's my mistake I should say AJ plus 1 equals to my temporary variable that's that's the reason I save it because I want to use it later and this is how we do the swap so let's try it again we're gonna run it we're gonna do four elements and we're gonna do the same example so 9 8 7 6 okay so this one looks a little better so for j equals 0 this is my original array for j equals 0 it moved the 9 it swapped these two elements 9 and 8 it moved the 9 back and the 8 up on the second iteration of j it checks these two number and the 9 is greater than the 7 so it swapped them and then on the third iteration of j it checks these two number and the 9 is greater than 6 so it swapped them so after the first i iteration this is i0 we got this array and then i became 1 it's gonna go through again but remember the second time it goes through i is 1 now so j so e is 4 minus i plus 1 i is 1 plus 1 is 2 so 4 minus 2 so this number now is 2 so j is only gonna go from 0 to 1 and that's it so that's why we have the two iteration here so this line here is j0 and this line is j1 because we don't need to go to the next one because we know 9 is already sorted it's already the greatest number is sorted array so for this one for j equals 0 we're gonna do this is i of 1 and j of 0 we're going to look at these two numbers. Well, we're going to look at this array. So we got up to here. So we're going to look at these two numbers. And they needed to be swapped. So we changed them. We switch the 7 and the 8. Next one, we're going to look at these two numbers. And we're switching the 6 and the 8. We know the 9 is already good. It's already sorted. So now we're up to here. We know... 8 and 9 is already good, it's already sorted. So for the next iteration of j, i is now 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. We take e is 4 minus 3 is 1. 
So J is only going to go from 0 to 0 because it has to be less than 1. So this is J0 here. So basically we take this array here and we'll check these two and they needed to be swapped because 7 is greater than 6. We got swap and that's the end of the uh, bubble sort. So now you have here you have an array that is sorted from the smallest number to the greatest number. Um, we can try one more example, something different. I'll run it again. This time let's do a five elements array and I'm gonna enter some crazy number here. It doesn't take it. If I do zero, it's gonna ask me again. If I do a T, it's gonna ask me again until I put in a good number, good integer like 54, takes it. Next number, five. Um, third number, if I do an E, it doesn't take it. So I'm gonna do 18 maybe. And this is the fourth one, right? Uh, let's do a seven. And this is the last one, um, 89. And here we go. Let's see what we got here. So I started out with my array of 54, 5, 18, 7, 89. And it goes through the same iteration since the length of the array is 5 now. So it's going to start with 4 iteration. Then it does 3, 2, 1. The reason it started with 4 because we are, again, we are checking the current element and the next element. So the next, the current element is the fourth element. The next element is the fifth element. So we are, in fact, checking all the elements of the array and when we're all done the array is sorted 5 7 18 54 89 and that my friend is how you do a bubble sort in java